If you'd like to follow along with me at home, open the Project Files folder, Lesson 4 folder, and then Find and Replace. If you've spent any time at all working in a word processing program, you're probably already familiar with the Find and Replace feature. That's the one where you can just type in a word or a number and then have the program go find every occurrence of that in the document and then replace that with something else if you so desire. Well, in this case, we're going to do that in Excel. Excel has the Find and Select button on the Home tab. And when you click on that, you can just go to Find. In the Find dialog box, we'll type in what we're looking for. And in this case, we're just looking for Burger. Well, since this is a menu for a burger cafe, I suppose we're going to find lots of these. Your active cell is where Excel will begin the search. Right now, the active cell is up here in A7. I'm just going to click at the bottom here. What that's going to do then is cause Excel to start back at the top and grab this first one up here, the Angry Burger Cafe. So we're going to just click Find Next to get started. And sure enough, it flags that first cell up there in cell B1. Hit Find Next again. And here you can see that it flagged the burger within the word hamburgers. So what this tells us is that Excel isn't paying any attention to prefixes and suffixes. It's looking for the root word. Whatever we type in find what, it doesn't care what's on either side of the word. It'll find that word if it's buried in a pile of letters that are 15 letters long. All right, let's try it again. Find next. And now it comes down to the single burger. And we can just continue to come down the whole way down the list. Now, there's a faster way to do this. And in all fairness, I've got to say that it's very rare that you're going to have everything you're looking for all scrunched into just a little group of cells like we have here. Typically, you're going to be working with a document that's much larger, and your search word might only show up two or three times in the document. And it's a shortcut to just get right to the heart of the things without having to go down through every single occurrence to find what you're looking for. You could just keep hitting Find Next. It'll just take you from one burger to the next. But try this instead. Click the Find All button. The Find All button opens a hidden part of the dialog box that you can just grab the bottom edge and pull down. And this will show you every occurrence of the word that you're looking for in the document. If you hover over these, you'll see that there's a hyperlink attached to each one. So if you're looking for a specific burger, like turkey burger, you can just click right on it and shazam, it goes right out there and goes to that cell. Pretty handy. To close this all up, just grab the bottom corner and just drag up until it disappears. Let's start at the bottom here again, and let's take a look at some of the options here. In the options part of the dialog box, we find that we can search within the worksheet, or we can look through the whole workbook. That's something that's pretty handy. You can search by rows or columns, and you can have Excel look through formulas, values, and comments for anything that you're searching for. I said a few minutes ago that Excel's looking for this root word right here, and it doesn't care about what's in front of it or behind it. But you can make it care if you choose the Match Entire Cell Contents box right here. Now when you do your search, Excel will only look for this word all by itself in a cell. So let's try that out. We'll hit Find Next, and you can see right here that it just finds Burger in cell B4. Click Find Next again. And it doesn't go anywhere, so you have to assume that that's the only occurrence. But let's just check this out with Find All. And sure enough, we find that that one burger there in cell B4 is the only one there. Well, what about Match Case? By default, Excel doesn't pay any attention to capital letters or lowercase letters. But you can force the issue if you want to. Right now, our burger is lowercase. If you tell it to find only those things that match the case here, lowercase, let's see what we get. Find Next. So it finds Aussie Works Burger right there. Find Next again. It finds Burgers Buried Within Hamburgers, which of course isn't capitalized. And Find Next again. Here it finds Cheap Hamburgers Also Buried Within Hamburgers. Find Next again. And now it just repeats and goes back down through, and it finds our Aussie Works Burger again. Again, it would just be faster just to hit Find All and see what it turns up with there. There's our three occurrences there. Now notice that in the dialog box, we have a Find tab and a Replace tab. Interestingly enough, I'm going to close that. If you go to the Find and Select button, and you choose Replace instead of Find, guess where you're going to go? Same dialog box, except now you go to the Replace tab. 
All right, well, that makes sense, I guess. The Replace tab allows you to take whatever you're looking for, in this case burger, and replace it with something else. Well, I don't want to change my burgers, but I might want to change some prices. First off, I'm going to uncheck Match Case. Click the Options button to collapse all the extra options and just streamline this whole affair a little bit. And we'll come over here and say, hey, let's say we want to take all our cheap burgers, the $3.99 burgers, and raise the price a buck. So what we'll do is we'll type in the original price, 3.99, and we don't have to type in the dollar sign, by the way. And we're going to replace it with 4.99. And now we have a couple options on how to go about this. We can change them all with Replace All with one fell swoop, or we can replace each one individually by starting with Find Next and then making a decision on whether we want to change it or not. Now of the two options, the Find Next with the individual replace is the safest way to do things. I'll show you why in a couple of seconds, but let's try this out first. I'll hit Find Next, and it finds the first occurrence of the number, and I'll just say Replace. And when I click Replace, it automatically goes to the next number or I can just hit replace again. And I can just keep going down hitting replace. And if I find one that I don't want to change, maybe Aussie Works Burger is going to just stay at $3.99, I'll just skip the replace button and go to find next again. It'll skip over that number and then present me with a new number to change. And I'll go ahead and replace that. Well, what about replace all? Why couldn't I use that? That seems pretty straightforward. Well, let's undo a few of the things that we did here. Here we go, put them all back to $3.99, and we'll try Replace All. Here we go. And sure enough, we read here Excel has completed its search and has made eight replacements. So there's all our numbers changed. That worked out pretty well. And we can check these results pretty easily right here because they're all clumped together. But remember, in a big worksheet, you might end up with some surprises. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to clear out the numbers here, and we're going to go back to Burger lowercase. And I'm going to tell Excel that I want to match the case for that. So I'll click the Options button and check Match Case. I'll just pull this out of the way here. And I want to replace every lowercase burger with capital B-U-R-G-E-R. Alright, so let's see what we end up with now. I'm going to hit Replace All. It says Excel has completed the search and made three replacements. All right, well, let's see what this looks like. Close this up. Oh, look at this. We got cheap ham burgers, gourmet ham burgers. Well, that doesn't look good. This one's okay. We probably wanted to change this one. But these two guys, remember, Excel doesn't pay attention to prefixes and suffixes. It found every occurrence of burger, regardless of what was around it, and capitalized it. So in this case, it didn't work out the way we expected it to. We would have been better off to go through those one at a time and change them individually. All right, so that ought to give you enough to get started. Here's your assignment. I'd like you to do a find and replace for all of the $5.99 burgers and raise their prices to $6.99. Pause the video. Do the exercise, and then turn me back on when you're ready. All right, let's work it through together. We'll do Find and Select, choose Replace. I want to make sure that I uncheck Match Case here, and I'll just close the options up. And then we're going to look for $5.99, and replace it with $6.99. And let's see, they're all clumped together here. I don't see any other 599s. Let's try a replace all and see how that works out. Great, nine replacements. But wait a minute. It made nine replacements? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only eight of them there. Where's the ninth one? Well, this is exactly the point. Sometimes you don't know. If we scroll down here, here's a little 699 just sitting down there booby-trapped into cell C73. Who knew? All right, so that's one of the fallbacks of using Replace All. Sometimes you get results that you don't expect. But just for fun, we'll turn these back to the way they were. Let's look for 699 burgers, or just 699, and put them back to 599. And then we'll do a Replace All, since we already know that there are nine that need changed. And now we'll go back and do it the other way. We'll do 599 and we want to go to 699 and then we'll just do it one at a time. 
we're going to start here in this empty cell so that it goes down from that point. And we'll do Find Next. And then we'll just replace each one individually, clicking on Replace as we go down. And now it jumps down to cell C73. We can clearly see that value there. And we're going to say, nope, I don't want to do that. Just hit Find Next. Of course, it doesn't go anywhere because that's the end. So we'll just hit Close and then Control Home to go back to the top of the document. Find and Replace is a great tool, and it's capable of doing some advanced things that we're not going to talk about in this lesson. But later in the course, when we talk about formatting, we'll discover how to use the tool to find and replace formats in your document. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? All right, so we'll see you in the next video.